Hello and welcome to our first ever High Dynamic Range Technical Review. I'm Mr. HDR and in this video we're going to take a look at the Star Trek Beyond 4K Blu-ray. More specifically, we'll try to figure out if it's really too dim or dark, like the critic and user reviews have mentioned. But before we start, I'll take a few seconds to explain a couple of things. Older HD TVs with standard dynamic range have a typical brightness of about 100 nits, also known as candela per square meter. What this means is that if you take a square meter and you place 100 burning candles in it, you get the approximate brightness of a standard TV. But newer 4K HDR TVs can support much higher brightness in both HDR and SDR modes. So for instance, a TV that can do 1000 nits would have a brightness of up to 1000 candles in the same square meter space. The second thing I need to explain is this waveform graph that we will be using. It plots the brightness of each pixel in an image from left to right. Also note that the y-axis, which is the vertical axis on the left side here, shows the brightness in nits. For example, in this image, if we take each vertical column of pixels from left to right and plot a brightness graph, we'll get something like the diagram below. Notice there are distinct bumps on the left side of the graph and in the middle. These correspond to the brighter parts of the image. And those of you who are mathematically inclined will also notice that the scale is logarithmic, not linear. This means brightness values that are close to the top of the chart are actually not as bright as you would think. Alright, so let's start with the same flyby of the Enterprise. If you play this a few times, you'll see that the maximum brightness we get in the scene is only about 600 nits, even if the scene is supposed to feature a very bright light. Still, 600 nits is pretty bright. However, in the second flyby, the brightness actually goes up to 850 nits, while the darker parts of the image remain well below 10 nits. Next, let's take a look at a few scenes that take place on the Enterprise. You'll notice that there are more bright highlights because of the lights on the bridge and in the storage room, but the brightness again does not go above 600 nits. The Enterprise is scheduled for a reprovisioning stop at Yorktown, the Federation's newest, most advanced starbase. Perhaps a break from routine will offer up some respite. In these scenes with Kirk and McCoy, we can see why people think this movie is dark. Here the brightness stays well below 100 nits, but if you look at the way they light the set, you'll see this is actually the intent of the director, another problem with the color grading. Besides, I found this in Chekhov's locker. But there are also brighter scenes. When the Enterprise enters the Yorktown, the overall brightness of the image is much higher, although the highlights are capped at about 500 nits. My guess is that they are trying to stay within the maximum frame average light level, which limits the average brightness of the entire frame. If you want to learn more about this limitation, go check out the links in the description of the video. Now let's take a look again at a few darker scenes. When Spock gets the bad news, you can again see that some of the shots sit at around 10 nits, with only the highlights approaching or going a bit over 100 nits. This is probably the intent of the cinematographer or director, due to the lighting they employed in the scene. However, this may be a good time to also mention another factor. As you can see in one of the articles I linked to in the description, the industry masters these 4K discs to be viewed in very dark environments. The desired luminance level in the room while you are watching these 4K movies is only 5 nits, which is very dark. People think HDR movies are supposed to be bright, but that's a common misconception. While it's true that the highlights of HDR videos can go much higher than in STR video, the typical brightness should actually be the same. Most of the content should be below 100 nits in both SDR and HDR video, with the HDR video going above 100 only for highlights such as bright lights, explosions like the ones you're seeing here, and the glare of the sun. That being said, we have seen that the artistic choice of the team working on this movie was to shoot scenes where the average brightness is lower than we're used to, 
at least when compared with the other two new track movies. We check the light levels on the other two 4K discs and the majority of the scenes are indeed mastered below 100 nits. However, the average light level in darker scenes is a bit higher in the other two movies than what we are seeing in this third movie. I hope you've enjoyed our first HDR analysis. Please let us know in the comments if you'd like us to work on more such reviews. Also, please check out the articles we link to in the description as they help answer a lot of questions about HDR in general.